Finally, MiHoYo has come back with a new special program. What is up everyone? AJ here. And in this video, I will be reacting to the version 2.7 special program. So, without further ado, let's see what version 2.7 has in store for us. Bring it. Greetings and welcome to the Genshin Impact version 2.7 special program. I'm your host, Zach Aguilar, voice of Ether, and today I'm joined by... Max Middleman, voice of the Arataki Gang's one and only Leader Supreme, Arataki Ito. <laughs> and Hello, me, uh, I'm Laura Post, and I voice Yelan. So, wait, that's it? Well, no. Yelan's a woman of mystery, so let's keep it simple before we get to officially introduce her. Oh, right, yeah, oh, okay. gotcha, gotcha. Okay. Fine, fine. And fine. judging from the insist. lovely image we have here, there'll be lots of other characters also making appearances this time around, so I'm sure it's going to be quite the party. Yeah, for sure. And travelers will definitely be seeing some familiar faces appearing alongside our new characters as we all delve into the chasm. Ooh. The chasm. Very mysterious. <laughs> yeah. I'm already super excited, and I'm sure everyone else is too, so let's kick things off with our brand new trailer for version 2.7, Hidden Dreams in the Depths. Roll tape! Roll, roll tape. Right, let's see what the new trailer has in... My father, story. he's thinking of stepping down from the Tianshu position. I first met Yelan when she was very young. Even back then, she was extremely tough, and she kept her cards close to her chest. Why? The day the chasm was unsealed, I put in a request to be transferred here, so I could finally learn the truth of what happened back then. What happened back then? Everything is chaotic here. If you stay here too long, this space may well devour you. Does that mean even Shao can't sense our presence here? Something seems to have been activated inside the Fantastic Compass. I fear that this problem underground is bigger than we thought. What the heck Just is Just focus this? on taking care of yourselves. I'll figure out the rest. And finally, Yelan is in the house. And who there she is. Gotcha. Busted. Here comes the catch. Let's Maybe I should make better use of my time. Yep. And we have Shinobu as well. Our bond is strong. Stand with me. Lightning terrified. No. It's alive. Why would you become like this? No way! Was that who I think it was? Something's not right. Whoa, 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 Something wicked this way comes. Ooh, how dramatic was that? Yeah, yeah. for real. Wow. Yeah, no kidding. Xiao's voice sounded a little odd in the trailer, so I hope he's okay. Yeah. And it looks like we also get to see some more of Lumine or Ether, depending on which twin you chose. And I'm not gonna lie, guys, we have so much stuff to introduce to everyone today. Right. I'm pretty sure that everyone's waiting to see all these new characters and what their new event wishes will be, so let's get started with that. Yeah. Wait. In the early part of version 2.7, our new playable okay, character, so Yelan, will be appearing in Yelan her will. own event wish. 
At the same time, our old buddy Xiao will also be returning for a rerun in his event wish. So in the later part the of version 2.7, uh, Arataki Ito, 2. 2. that's me, will be making a return Ela alongside his Xiao? deputy leader, well, Kuki Shinobu, be... in his own event wish. Ah, oh, Kuki Shinobu. Shinobu. She's a dreamboat. She can do anything. Which means phase also, one in was terms of weapons, be travelers can expect to see an all-new yes, weapon banner sweet. featuring the new well, five-star bow, Aqua Simulacra. It and that covers well. the new event wishes for version 2.7. Next, we have a quick trailer to give us a preview wishes. of the first of our new characters, Yelon. Roll tape! Hey. Lol. God, she's sexy. I am so gonna pull her. I don't give a damn about what other people say. I am gonna pull because damn, she's hot. She's really, really hot. Like, woo, really sexy AF level hot. That's another skill. And the first. Hello, traveler. Call me Yelan. I think you may need my help. Okay. And I just so happen to be interested in some information you have. In other words, you scratch my back, I'll scratch yours. Fair enough. Cool. I like that dice move. I really like how she turns invisible. It's like my favorite part. Yeah, I love how swift her movements are. Like... Ooh. And that dash, yeah, oh, super cool. Totally, that's dope. And what a silky smooth voice. Ah, shucks. <laughs> Lol. So many of you may already recognize Yelan from when she appeared in the chasm. Yeah. Her archery mm -hmm. skills are pretty impressive. So, Laura, would you mind lifting the veil on this mysterious character? Of course. Yes. Yelan is the mysterious owner of the Yenshang Tea House in Liyue. Definitely yeah, not the first mysterious tea house owner we've met. <laughs> That's right. Would you look at that? Seems like running a tea house can be a pretty confrontational job in Tibet. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. Uh, actually, though, being a tea house owner is not the only identity Yelan has. In fact, you could say that Yelan is a person with many different faces. She relies on her acting skills to naturally blend into any social setting, pull some strings to guide the course of events, and then poof disappear before anyone's noticed. <laughs> okay. Her activities have taken her across the other nations of Tevat, and even to the Abyss. All right, Whoa. nice. So she also travels around Tevat, like the Traveler. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, but no, maybe a little more dangerous looking than our Traveler? Hey, the Traveler can be dangerous. Well, sure, Yelan no. prefers the thrill of exploring dangerous places and living on the edge a little. Interesting. If you ask me, Yelon is starting to sound more like a special agent type of character. Well, sounds like you are following the clues, Zack. Yelon is actually a special intelligence officer that reports to Ningguang, and she serves as a reliable line of defense in protecting Liyue. Even those on the inside uh -huh. like Ganyu don't know the full extent of Yelon's duties. So in other words, Yelon works under Ningguang? Uh-huh. Kinda, but I wouldn't put it quite like that. To Yelan, her relationship with Ningguang isn't about rank, it's more about a collaboration. Ningguang arranges dangerous work, and Yelan brings her the resulting intel. This sounds so secretive. I, I'm kind of curious about how these two started working together. Yeah, me too. Please tell me. Yeah, she has well, a we'll just have to wait and see. <laughs> Speaking of her work, Yelan keeps tabs on any extraordinary individuals she comes across and puts them on a list. It wouldn't surprise me if we even found the traveler on her list and oh that she's been keeping a close eye on them. Uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> wait, are, are you serious? No. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe not. <laughs> anyway, no, uh, as someone sneaky. who works in special intelligence, Yelan is a master of disguise and an expert at seeing through people and understanding what they're thinking. So, if you'd like to see how Yelan operates in tough scenarios and works to uncover the truth, then be sure to check out her story quest on oh, the Orcus chapter, good. dropping in version 2.7. Sweet! Because 
Okay, I so now that we've heard a little bit about, about Yelan's Yelan. background, how about so we talk about her combat capabilities? Will, Let's do it! Will be on my Yelan YouTube. wields a bow and manipulates a Hydro Vision, and right. in combat, she's a Hydro DPS character that combines rapid attacks with agile mobility. Mm -hmm. She's an expert at weaving in and out of dangerous situations by swiftly moving across the battlefield and rejoining the fray with powerful attacks. She's so agile. You know, she may move as gracefully as a flower petal in the wind, but uh, do not cross her. She is a beast with that bow. <laughs> <laughs> After a short time out of combat, Yelan will enter a breakthrough state, which will cause her next charged aim shot to have decreased charge time. And once Ooh. charged, she can fire a breakthrough barb that will deal AOE hydro damage. Yelan's speed becomes quickly apparent in her elemental skill, Lingering Lifeline. Tapping or holding the skill button allows her to move rapidly using her lifeline, marking right. opponents along her path. When her rapid move ends, the lifeline will explode, dealing hydro damage to marked targets. Yelan also has a fixed chance to reset her breakthrough state, based on the number of opponents marked. Right. Cool. So we'd better try to mark a whole crowd of enemies to maximize the damage. Mm-hmm. Her elemental the the crowd, burst, the Depth better, Clarion Dice, deals AoE hydro damage and creates Wondrous Dice, which aid her in battle. The dice follow the character around and will initiate a coordinated attack when your active character uses a normal attack and each time Yelan's lifeline attack. explodes and hits opponents. Uh, with Yelan's passive talent, attack, means... Adapt with Ease, the active Yelan character's damage with, increases without... over time while the dice are active. Yeah, without, I'm telling you, um, do not mess attack. with her. She sounds gnarly. <laughs> uh, sounds like she could also fill a solid support role, too. Totally. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Yelan also has another passive talent called Turn Control, which causes Please? Yelan's max HP to be increased based on the number of elemental types that are present in the party. Whoa. And finally, because of Yelan's understanding of the Liyue region, she gains increased rewards when dispatched on a Liyue expedition for 20 hours. Just like ah, she that makes sense. Of course, even after sharing all this information, Yelan still has a lot of secrets. Travelers will have to spend more time with Yelan on their journey to learn more about her. She'll also be making an appearance in the new Archon Quest interlude chapter coming in version 2.7. We'll have more details on that shortly, so don't miss it. Nice. Ooh. And now, I think it's about time we introduce our second new character, Kuki Shinobu. Oh, she's the pride and joy of the Arataki gang. Second to Ito, of course. So uh, let's see her in action. Roll tape. Let me know if you ever find yourself in a pinch. Mizu I can Ashikawi. help you out. Okay. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. <laughs> wow. that's a spicy trailer. So cool. Yeah. I love the way she looks, like her color scheme and, of course, the green hair mm -hmm. and the mask. Like, she looks super capable. Me too. Yeah, no, I love her design. I love that, like, lightning flowing around her and the swords, the way they go up in the air and mm -hmm. poof, go down. <laughs> well, you guys can see why she'd be an obvious addition to the Arataki gang. She's just that good. Uh, all right, leave the introduction to me, will you? Only right. after getting to know Shinobu can you really begin to fathom how important she is to the entire Arataki gang. Kuki Shinobu knows how to do almost anything and is constantly rescuing the boss, aka Ito, and fellow gang members from dangerous situations. With her help, the little wandering gang of misfits and Hanamizaka has become a skilled crew capable of taking on any kind of commission. Oh, I think I see who's really running things in the gang. So the real question okay. here is why would someone as competent as Shinobu ever choose to join the Arataki gang? Uh, mm -hmm. uh, what are you trying to Sex say? Yeah. Oh, you know what I'm trying to say. <laughs> no, I'm not exactly sure, but, you know, let's move on. <laughs> anyway, we need to track the start of Shinobu's story back to her family. Turns out that her family has traditionally served as shrine maidens to Narukami for 
who knows how long. So okay. you're saying she went from a strict family of shrine maidens to joining the Arataki gang? Why? Yeah. That's, is that so surprising? That's a pretty big 180. Well, it just goes Ooh. to show how much she's changed. When she was younger, Shinobu was sent as an understudy to the Grand Narukami Shrine, but okay. after a certain incident, she started to doubt whether she was really suited for the strict life of a shrine maiden. So Shinobu decided to leave the path of her family behind and search for a path of her own. Out of curiosity and personal interest, she took the initiative to learn a variety of crafts and skills, and it wasn't long before she obtained many certificates. So many, in fact, that she can't even fit all her qualifications on a business card. For example, uh, Shinobu even went to study law in Liyue, which is when she met Yenfei. So they know ah. each other. Yenfei has some pretty random acquaintances. Yeah, <laughs> but Shinobu's had the chance to meet many people along the course of her studies, but because she wanted a free work environment, she's rejected countless work opportunities. She even passed on an opportunity from Kujo Tengu to work in the Tenryo Commission. What? Wait, they know each other too? Mm-hmm. And guess who she chose to be with? You can guess. Uh... uh... Uh, <laughs> Ningguang? It's the Arataki game! No. Oh, yeah. Oh, uh, yeah, that, no. that. For some reason. Guys, I'm so excited. It's, it's great. But okay, moving on. No one why? knows why. Moving on. <laughs> oh, All right, if you're interested in learning more crew. about Kuki Shinobu and the Arataki game, why Arataki are, game? then be sure to check out Shinobu's very own hangout event in version 2.7. Okay. Not only will you get to see a day in the life of the Arataki game, how okay. exciting is that, but you'll also get to learn a lot more about Shinobu's past. And that's about all I can say for now. Travelers will have to check out the event to learn more. Okay, we've covered her backstory. Now let's see the Arataki gang's deputy leader kicking some butt in battle. Woo. Kuki Shinobu is a support character who wields a sword and uses her electrovision to both heal teammates and deal She's continuous damage from off the battlefield. She can do it all. Oh, her unique skills allow her to sacrifice her own HP in combat in order to heal other party members. Aww. It's valiant. That's so sweet of her. It's Aww. selfless. Nice. It's generous. When she uses her elemental skill, Sanctifying Ring, she sacrifices a certain portion of her HP to create a grass ring of sanctification okay. that'll heal friendly characters within it and deal continuous electro damage to surrounding opponents. After unlocking the passive Basically, talent she's Heart's um, Repose, her elemental leader. skills healing and damage will be boosted based on Shinobu's I mean, elemental we have a hydro, With another passive hydro talent type breaking free, when Shinobu's um, HP Barbara is low, her healing bonus Barbara? is increased. So, and, uh, travelers will need to monitor her HP like when he using her skill. Diona? You don't want it to be too low, but and at the I same time, that, yeah, lower is also is better. Jin. Definitely, yes. Shinobu's elemental burst, Gyoe Naru Kamikari Yama Right, creates a special field in front of her that deals continuous electro damage to opponents within it. And it goes without saying that Shinobu is amazing at carrying out expeditions. Right. With the passive talent Protracted Prayers, she gains increased rewards when dispatched on an Inazuma expedition for 20 hours. So she knows Same how to bring home as, um, a Shin -ha and Yelan, tasty. But it is. In, in, it's Inazuma, very tasty. Is it of Let me tell you, man, Ito sure is lucky to have such a capable deputy leader. But the feeling is mutual, and Shinobu feels the members of the gang are also super important to her. They are her true family members, regardless of her rebellious nature. Although Shinobu has to bail them out of trouble over and over again, the gang is the only place she feels truly free and at peace. I think it's great that they found each other. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Well, I hope everyone is feeling pretty excited for these new characters. Oh boy, we covered a lot there. Yeah, definitely a lot. So, mm, I think it's about time we roll out our next redemption code. <laughs> redemption code. Roll Re out the redemption code. All right, welcome back, everyone. We're back. Yes. Woo. Next, we will be diving into some of the new events players can expect to see coming their way in version 2.7. Our right. first event not only includes our new Archon Quest interlude chapter, but will also contain a new challenge game mode. The event's called Perilous Trail. Okay. The Archon Quest will be featuring a very unique cast of characters as Yenfei, Yelan, Ito, and Shinobu team up with the Traveler when they become stranded deep in the chasm. 
Okay. And it's not long before we also discover that Xiao is also conducting an investigation of his own in the chasm. Right. Investigation, you say? Hmm? <laughs> Because there's a lot of history and secrets buried within the chasm, including the story of how the people of Liwei fought off monsters 500 years ago. Whoa. Yelan has been monitoring this place for quite some time, trying to find out the truth of what happened back then. Okay. It turns out that this piece of history is also related to her origins. The okay. mystery. mystery! Yeah, the group will also find themselves facing a crisis in the chasm and will have to survive together in what will definitely be a thrilling experience. Mm. Okay. So from what's been revealed in the previous version, we know that there is a deep connection between the Yakshas and what happened in the chasm. Okay. It even seems that our vigilant Yaksha Shao has some obsession with the area. It'll be interesting to see why he's in the chasm and what he's looking for down there. Travelers will have to follow Xiao's steps to learn more about the history that has been sealed there. As travelers play through the Archon Quest, the combat challenge Realms of Guile and War will also gradually become available. Travelers will need to constantly defeat enemies within a challenge domain. Completing three challenges will be counted as a round. The first three domains will consist of three rounds, and the last domain will have six rounds. What's unique about this event is that after each round, you have to rearrange your party according to the domain's rules. For example, in the Dire Cliff Court domain, only one member of the current party can be selected to continue on, while everyone else will enter recuperation mode and will be unable to fight. In another domain, oh, Kaleidoscope Cage, two characters will be selected at random and will be unable to continue the fight. Interesting. So it looks like travelers will need to be prepared to face a variety of scenarios. Yeah, but I'm sure our travelers will come up with some teams and strategies to handle the challenges. Okay. Still, it sounds like they're going to need to use a lot of characters. Uh, I don't know if everyone's leveled up quite so many. Oh, yeah, that's a good I point. Um, I know I got to level up a lot of my characters. Um, <laughs> So it's important we mention that each of the domains will also have multiple trial characters prepared oh, for travelers to use. Oh. And additionally, travelers may select and equip three stratagems per combat round that will provide buffs in battle. Oh, cool. Okay. Yeah. Travelers may this consume stratagem shards they've collected new? in battle to redraw stratagems or select a previously equipped stratagem for continued use. Stratagem shards may even be used to redeploy downed characters. With the help of all of these supporting mechanics, travelers can confidently try the challenges with different combinations of characters. Yeah, and in addition to exchangeable rewards in the event shop, everyone should remember to also collect rewards from the challenge quests on the event page. The rewards will include an event-exclusive four-star bow called Fading Twilight. Ooh, okay. Fancy. Sounds cool. So you guys have got to check out this event. Oh, I definitely. Uh, I wonder what's the event of All Fading right. Twilight. Our next event is called A Muddy Bazaar Adventure. This one also takes place down in the chasm. Okay. That darn mysterious chasm. <laughs> so mysterious. For reasons unknown, some dark mud-like substance has come pouring out of the caverns and mines of the chasm. And once again, the Sumeru scholar Hosseini has appeared to help us resolve the crisis. In right. this event, we will have to deal with constantly oozing dark mud, as well as monsters that have been strengthened by its effects. Ooh, creepy. Yeah. With the help of Persina Spike, we'll need to clear the mud, weaken and defeat monsters, and let the spike purify the surrounding area while energizing itself. Attacks okay. from monsters will disable the spike, so travelers must be sure to protect them. Okay. Also, when the spike is operating normally, using blooming light with a luminstone adjuvant of a certain level will clear out nearby oozing concretions, granting the spike additional energy and speeding up the charging process. Oh, right. heck yeah. Nice. Uh, as the event progresses through different phases, uses for the spike will also change. For example, okay. the spike could release shockwaves at intervals that attack opponents and dispel the buffs that those opponents possess. Also, okay. the challenge objectives will change throughout the event. In some challenges, travelers may have to defeat the enemies in a limited amount of time, while in others, okay. travelers will have to escort a hot air balloon to its destination while clearing out dark mud along the way. Really? In the last phase of the event, travelers will have to clear dark mud and defeat monsters to reach a high score. 
In this challenge, powerful opponents will appear and travelers may defeat them to earn more points. Travelers will need to be careful of the dark mud as it drains HP and affects our ability to move. Mm -hmm. So be sure to stay safe and make quick work of any enemies you encounter. Keep right. yourself alive! <laughs> yeah. I'm up! So, you guys remember how I said that Shinobu studied law in Liyue before? Uh -huh. Well, to celebrate her graduation, we're holding a special event. The almighty Arataki Great and Glorious Drum Along Festival! Which, in case you didn't catch that, is gonna be another rhythm game event. Yes! Okay. Rhythm game! Rhythm game! Lord. Rhythm game! Rhythm game! <laughs> yeah, yep. And we're gonna be shaking things up a little from games. the previous music games. This time, travelers will be receiving a drum, so the game will be changing to a play style that is a little more suitable for a percussive feel. It'll probably be best if we just show the travelers how it works, so let's take a look at how to play. Alright. Alright, here we go. Yes, pro mode. That's the only kind of rhythm game I want to play. Let's go, drum in hand. All right, it's like one of the semicircle style ones. Yeah. I can get behind that. Okay, so you gotta use two hands. All right. I mean, some people do them one-handed, but I can't imagine doing that personally. Yeah, it's tough for me. We're seeing a lot of single notes. Yep, we, we got, got the, the we got the taps right. and we got the holes. We got tippy taps so and the holes. Good. And then we have the double notes too. You have to hold them down at the same time. Nice, multitasking. Uh, I'm really loving this. <laughs> this reminds me of my days when I played um, Love Life Squidle Festival. This music is bopping. I know, right? That's what the, all the kids say. Bopping. Oh, tough, complicated. I think they one. Oh, they missed one. No. <laughs> no. Combo. Look at breaker. that combo. Double notes. Lots of double notes. You think that this like I played bopping uh, my head to the music? Will be into this. You see. Yes, she did. <laughs> okay. Interesting. Time to shine. Oh, how fun is that? Oh man, that looks so fun to play. Well, considering that travelers might be playing the rhythm game on a variety of different devices, the designers have so kindly implemented a lag calibration function. This means travelers can calibrate their device by tapping the screen when they hear the accented and can adjust the decision line until it roughly coincides with the note position they entered. By making these little adjustments, travelers can improve the gameplay experience for each of their individual devices and playing habits. Also, we'll be able to adjust the note falling speed as well as the volume of the button sound when pressed. Additionally, more detail was given to how the system determines whether each note is counted as successfully hit or missed. In this music game, travelers will have access to all three difficulties from the very beginning. So, travelers who are more confident in their drumming skills, <clears throat> such as myself, can clear the right. higher difficulties and still be able to collect the corresponding rewards for completing the lower difficulties as well. And just wait, I haven't even gotten to the coolest feature yet. Oh. As tunes are unlocked, a note editor mode will also be unlocked. Oh, cool. Create your own. <laughs> All right, that is pretty cool. <laughs> Travelers okay. can freely edit the note positions in these tunes to create their own beat maps of the game's musical scores, which can then be shared with other people. Nice. Of course, in order to share I your don't tunes with others, you, you will first much. be required to play the song and reach a specific rank to generate the share code. And finally, travelers will also find some special gifts and messages left by some familiar friends at the festival. So don't forget to check those out. Oh, I will. Oh, I know you will. All right, and last but not least, we have another interesting event. The aim of the event? Create a robot. <laughs> what? <laughs> ah, yeah. Nobody saw that one coming. Okay, That's so right, travelers will receive a material collector from a toy merchant from Fontaine. There okay. are a total of three processes you must complete. Number one, source material collection. Number two, elemental charge. And number three, core activation. 
Completing these processes will produce a robotic furnishing that can be placed in the Serena teapot. The robots can have a variety of possible model types and animations, okay. which will be determined by what you do during the three processes we just mentioned. Okay. There is even a chance to produce a special furnishing that can perform all three animations. Oh, right. nice! During the event, travelers will be able to claim a total of four robots from test model vouchers. If, say, you were unable to produce the model you wanted, you can use the trade function to send requests and obtain the product model that you need. So, okay. who's excited to make some robots? Ooh, I <laughs> am! <laughs> yeah, I can't wait to see what everyone makes in this event. And that's it for the new events in version 2.7. Next, okay. we have some important system updates and optimizations coming to the game. First, to help travelers on their adventures, the system designers have added challenge feature tips to the beginning of some high-level material domains. These will include some suggestions on how to quickly defeat the monsters in the domain, which might help travelers find the optimum team or strategy this to officially clear it. Next, the system designers will be providing some detailed tips to help players train and strengthen their characters. Okay. When players open the character talents menu, they can use the newly added talent reference button to see talent priority recommendations based on the actual data of other active players. And by pressing the attribute reference button in the character artifacts menu, players can see the main attribute usage statistics for each artifact slot. The system designers wish to give everyone more intuitive data to reference while choosing how to strengthen each of your characters. Ooh, cool. Yeah, so, yeah. That'll make it easier. Um, the talent reference button looks super convenient. Like, it seems like it would be really helpful if you're kind of on the fence and you don't know what you want to pick. You can see what everybody else has, like, done in the past. Oh, totally. Anyways, we also have another update regarding the game's music. During okay. version 2.7, we will be releasing a new OST album, Millilith's Watch which includes okay. all the music composed by the Hoyo Mix team for the new Chasm area. Ooh, sounds cool. My favorite part of any game is the soundtrack, so I'm looking forward to hearing that. Yeah. Okay, next we have a new collaboration to announce to everyone. Genshin Impact will be teaming up with the Funko brand to release a series of Genshin Impact Funko Pops. Whoa! Woo! Yeah. <laughs> the first wave will feature figurines of Paimon, Ether, the the one I, I voice, and Lumine. These right. will be released as Funko Pop Asia bobblehead figures. Travelers who are interested can head to the official Funko website to be notified when the figures are released. Although you have to wait for the figures, you won't have to wait for the next redemption code. Yay. Wow, are we seriously at the end already? For real? That flew by. Yeah, but we actually covered well, a lot of content oh, we today. Definitely. You know, we did cover a lot, didn't we? Yep. And as usual, I got to ask you guys, how did you like being on the special program? Super fun. It was great. <laughs> I love my little chibi. <laughs> Lol. Uh, and I'm super excited to have gotten to give Yelon a formal introduction. So. Like, yeah. finally. And I, I'm really excited for people to meet Kuki. Yeah. Oh my gosh, there's so many things coming. Um, like I'm... the rhythm game. The rhythm, rhythm, game. Game. Rhythm, rhythm game. Yes. And uh, voice like this building really robots. Excited about the, uh, I'm excited game. for the storyline as well to see, you know, more of what is happening down there in the chasm. There's a lot I going on. I want the storyline as well. <laughs> but yeah, I guess that is it for today's special program. Thanks for watching, everybody, and we'll see y'all next time. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Bye. Bye, guys. Bye. And with that, that's a wrap of the premiere of the version 2.7 special program. But before I end my video, how about we check out the Japanese version of the version 2.7 trailer, shall we? ジュエが伝説を地に移することになって、わしがエランと知り合ったばかりの頃、彼女はまだとても若かった。だがあの頃から彼女はとても力強い雰囲気をまとっていて、どこかつかめない性格だった。双眼鏡園の周囲の封
空間に蝕まれるもしかしてあのショーでさえオイラたちの気配を感じられないのか大義版の中で何かが起動したようだおそらくここでは私たちの想像を絶するような事態が起きているのかもしれない君たちも気をつけてちょうだいあとは私に任せてセクシー捕まえたはっいいとよ工作せよどうやら他にやることを探しないとえー、ねえ忍ぶナグサのリンしっかり立ってな嫌いバッジョはいSo, yeah, that's pretty much it.、Uh, wow, that's, that's quite a lot. So, when, so yeah, and then again, she needs new stuff. There will be more new videos on my YouTube channel, so please do look forward to that. Anyway, this is the part where I end my video. Thank you guys for watching. Hope you guys enjoy what you're watching. If you guys enjoy what you watch, please do give a like and subscribe. It's very late.、I'm, It's,、uh, it's like 1 45 a.m. here. Thank、uh, Once again, thank you. Good morning, good afternoon, good night, what freaking ever. I'm gonna, I'm gonna take my nap. See you in the next video. Peace out.